display good lighting. Looks like we're at a, um, what's that park in California? Cabo. Hey everyone, I am using the Panasonic Lumix S-Pro 24-70 zoom lens. This lens just came out a couple months ago, late 2019, and I'm primarily using it for portraits today, so you'll see me zooming to about 70 millimeters, uh, shooting our model today, who is? Hi, I'm Lupe, no strange to this channel. Mm -hmm. I'm going on five years of modeling now. I'm from the island, from Guam. And and you're no stranger to the channel. This is actually your third time on the channel. Yes, it is. So. And we've been working together for a while with the Sony A7R2. I think that was like three or four years ago. Yeah, three or four years ago. Yeah. And all of the videos that we worked um, with together, they've gotten a lot of views. Yeah. Especially with the D850. <laughs> and that so, yeah, so <laughs> you're used to um, the cameras I use on you to be pretty heavy. Uh, you were commenting before that it, the weight is pretty much the same as the D850, the yes, Nikon? Yes, it's very similar in weight, it's just more compact from what mm -hmm. I remember. So okay. it's a lot girthier than the last lens. Um, and we've been getting a lot of good shots. We've been shooting about for about 15 minutes. 15. Yeah. And this camera gets a lot of really good shots mm -hmm. compared to my phone, of course, because that's all I use. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite features that this camera has is a little sensor on the... Electronic viewfinder. Yeah, electronic yeah. viewfinder. Just because whenever I'm shooting shot by shot, I hate getting glare caught on my screen. So mm -hmm. by looking through the glare finder or the picture finder. Uh, EVF, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Yeah. It makes it so much easier to see it because the pictures are that much clearer. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to mention, the EVF that Lupe is talking about is right now, of as of January or February now, 2020, the best electronic viewfinder on the market. So when you're looking through there, that's like super crisp, super sharp images. So mm -hmm. it really helps the, the rain is going away, the sun's coming out, um, hard to look at the images from the rear LCD, like you're saying a lot of glare, but when you look through the EVF, it's super clear. Which is really convenient. Yeah. So you don't have to like run off sides and find shade just to look at your photos. You can look at it right then and there. Yeah. So a couple more outfits after this, uh, we're gonna keep on shooting. So first impressions of the S Pro 24-70, it really feels like a pro grade lens. Of course, it's in the name, uh, S Pro. Uh, Lupe is holding it right now. The lens itself is pretty heavy at 2.06 pounds. Uh, it is certified by Leica. It is stamped on the bottom of the lens. And you can tell this is a large lens because the filter thread is pretty huge at 82 millimeters. Uh, the close focusing is about 1.21 uh, feet. Um, so I think that's still pretty close, about a little, little over a foot. Uh, but overall, yeah, just holding it in your hands, it's a, it's a beast uh, of a lens. It's really well built. And it got caught in the rain earlier, uh, 30 minutes ago while I was raining. And it also has great uh, weather sealing. And Lupe found out by accident, if you push the focusing ring down, it goes into manual focus right away. And then if you pop it back up, it goes into autofocus. I think it's great for for videographers. Okay, we'll keep on shooting. Oh good, recognize your whole body. Nice. I'm gonna keep on taking a lot of shots, so we have good for once. Some eternal features of this lens, it has 18 elements and 16 groups. The diaphragm blades, they are 11, 11 rounded blades, and it gives it that very smooth um, bokeh that you're seeing uh, when shooting Lupe. Right now Lupe is changing into her second outfit, and we're going to move over to the street here, to my right, and take some uh, street shots with um, 24-70 S-Pro. Your 
Some positives and negatives about this lens. The positives is image quality is awesome. I can tell already uh, just by zooming in, it's sharp corner to corner. Uh, another great positive thing about it is just the construction of it. I like the way it feels. Uh, some negatives is it's kind of heavy on the heavy side. And yeah. And the price uh, of this lens, brand new as of February 2020, is $2,200 for this zoom lens. But to justify it, I would say because 90% of your shots comes from this range, 24 to 70, 24 being really wide, 70 telephoto, and you can use it uh, for portraits, like I'm doing now with Lupe, uh, could be worth it. Could be worth spending that high price tag for something where 90% of your photos um, will come from. And Lupe's in her second outfit. Uh, we're still gonna shoot some more. Uh, comments about photo shoots so far. Um. It might not be in my price range, but if I was to book anybody as a photographer, I would like for them to have a camera of this quality. Just yes. because you get what you pay for, you get your high high definition pictures. Mm -hmm. You know, along with it, you get to have a very fun experience, like seeing the camera work. Mm -hmm. so, I really like it. Yeah, and I, I think it deserves that name, S Pro, uh, for professionals. And focus is quick. Um, you have a good aperture, 2.8. 2.8 lets a lot of light in. And uh, for years, many years, um, over a decade, even decades, um, 24 to 70 has been like a professional photographer's uh, choice of zoom lens. So we'll keep on shooting. And I think we have maybe time for one more, one more alpha change. Yeah. I forgot to mention that this lens does not have image stabilization built in. So you have to rely on the Lumix S1R, which does have in-body image stabilization. And Lupe, earlier you were mentioning or asking me if the lens actually affects the color of the image. And yes, it does. I'm seeing a lot of contrasty, warm images coming from uh, this lens. Uh, some lenses that I've used in the past actually have like a cooler, um, color to it, but this one I'm seeing is warm, uh, contrasty. Uh, so, overall opinion about the photo shoot so far? I'm really impressed with the camera overall, um, just because it's easier to get things done when you can mm -hmm. see everything right out in front of you. Yeah. You know, you don't have to focus too much because it has autofocus. Um, the image is clear, perfectly clear, mm -hmm. whether you're looking at the screen or if you're looking in through the, I can't remember what it is again. Electronic viewfinder, uh, EVF. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But makes things go a lot faster mm -hmm. and smoother, which is really nice. nice. Social media for our viewers to follow you. Uh, Instagram is the same name for everything. Um, Instagram, Visco, Snapchat, Twitter. It's miss.lupe underscore Marie. And I believe it's going to be in the information below as well. Yes, and also on screen. And on screen. So we have some sunlight left. Um, We'll, we'll keep on shooting until the sun goes down in about like 10 minutes. Um, but if you haven't, please follow Lupe. And also, if you haven't, please subscribe to our channel. Hey everyone, we are home now. I have three RAW files that I want to look at from the Panasonic S1R. Here's the first RAW file. If you notice, uh, the colors are a little bit muted. Uh, these raw files I'm going to show you have been unedited, but zooming in, I don't really like the Adobe color for the Lumis files. I do like camera standard, and camera standard actually brings out uh, the skin tones better and the greens. So before, and here it is after. And if you don't know how to get camera standard, or if you don't see it from the drop down, you can click on the profile browser, which is the four boxes on the right hand side. Go to the plus sign, manage profiles, and just make sure 
camera matching is turned on and scroll down in camera matching and you can do standard and I made standard one of my favorites so it's easily accessible okay so we have uh, camera standard on uh, zooming in 2.8 I notice it's a little bit soft only if the model or subject is further away but what's most impressive is I don't see any chromatic aberrations uh, when the Sun is hitting Lupe's hair and it is sharp uh, cause considering it's a zoom lens next photo again unedited Adobe color let's change that to camera standard there you go much better zooming in very sharp and Lupe's a little bit closer to the the lens and I, all these pictures I shot at 70 millimeter wide open 2.8 no chromatic aberrations at all you can count every single eyelash in Lupe's eyes um, bokeh um, highlighted circular bokeh in the background uh, to me it's it's soft it's almost like I'm shooting a prime lens it reminds me of last photo I want to look at again reset unedited Adobe color to camera standard I do prefer this uh, color science of the camera standard in Lightroom so zooming in yeah very sharp at 2.8 and let's look at the transition from sharpness to background blur okay and looking at the background very very smooth uh, like I said it does remind me of a prime lens and having a fast aperture 2.8 lets in a lot of light and you can actually get away with all portraits uh, just zooming into 70 millimeter and shooting wide open at 2.8 but which lens to get if you just purchase the S1 series body, the H, um, the R, or just regular S1, it really depends what you do. If you're a hybrid shooter, so a lot of videos and photos, then maybe the 24 to 105 because that lens does have the built-in OIS, so you can get dual image stabilization and it'll be much better for videos. And you can even get away with events, event shooting at a constant f4 a zoom lens. 24 to 70, 2.8. Uh, maybe if you're in a lot of low light situations, you can just lay, let the um, Lumus body take care of the image stabilization, the IBIS, uh, and it's pretty good. The Lumus and body's image stabilization is very good. And yeah, 24 to 70 on um, if you shoot weddings, um, portraits, but it is very expensive at 2,200. Uh, if you don't have the budget, then I think you can get away with the 24 to 105. But what I would do is I would get the 24 to 105 use um, for less than a thousand and spend that extra 500 on a prime lens and a prime lens I would probably get is maybe the Sigma 45 2.8 or maybe uh, an adapted um, Voigtlander lens for around five or six hundred dollars um, the 75 1.5 which I'm planning uh, to get in soon uh, for this channel uh, to review everyone thanks for watching and if you haven't please subscribe